to the uh, January 18th, 2022 meeting of the Stone Board in Andegua. Uh, we'll start off our uh, meeting as we do with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll just have a moment of silence for our troops. Thank you. Okay, um, I guess I'm Chip Saylor. I am now the new chairman of the board, having been on the board in a lesser capacity for about 20 years. Um, but we will, uh, I'd like to just go over quickly the Zoom meeting procedure. Uh, basically, the, um, all people should remain muted, uh, and, uh, when called on, you can unmute yourself. Anybody on the phone, I think, uh, uh, Shauna will control any muting for them. Is that correct? I don't see anybody just uh, yeah. Yeah. video. Um, our usual, our, our routine procedure is that we will uh, do um, public hearings on the, actually tonight we have two, uh, on the new public hearings. We'll just have the uh, applicants present their uh, case for the variance and then uh, after they presented the case, we'll have uh, questions from the board. And uh, then if there are questions, I will ask for questions from the audience, uh, at which time, uh, again, you can uh, be recognized and then unmute yourself. Um, after everyone has given in uh, the information that they wish, uh, we will ask the applicant whether or not <coughs> we, they'd like to close the public hearing and if so, we would have uh, 62 days to make a decision, but typically I uh, would make the decision on the, the night on tonight. So, um, <clears throat> okay, let's get started then. The first uh, application is Venezia Associates representing ABDB Silver Springs, owner of property at 4351 Kitchener Point. They're requesting an area variance for a stream setback of 33 feet when a 100 feet uh, setback is the minimum. A 67 foot uh, variance is being requested. Uh, who will be presenting that for us? Uh, I will kick us off. This is Doug Bennett. Uh, I am the owner of the property. I'll kick us off and then I'll turn it over to a few team members for uh, some further discussion and deep dive. Um, Good evening. Uh, thank you for coming and hearing us today. My name is Doug Bennett. As I mentioned, my wife and I currently reside in Rochester, New York, and purchased five three, uh, excuse me, four three five one Tishner Point Drive in May of two thousand twenty one. After just absolutely falling in love with the property, um, you know, we immediately felt the magic of the land, its richness, richness of history and life and natural beauty. And we are actively involved in helping the community, both Rochester and Canandaigua. While we're fairly private in our lives, we believe in living sustainably and keeping a low carbon footprint and appreciate nature and all its beauty. With this property, um, our primary goal is protecting and celebrating the natural landscape and history that was so well cared for throughout the many, many really centuries that this property has been uh, passed down generations. Uh, our intention is to build a single family home that feels one with nature, disturbing as little of the natural surroundings as possible. And with the help of our landscaping and architectural teams, we've gone to great lengths to plan to, in our plans to save as many of the trees and grasses and natural habitats 
that exist on the property and further foster the diversity of life with new native plantings. The house itself will have a zero carbon footprint and, and follow passive house standards, use geothermal heating and cooling, has a green roof and, and really will virtually disappear into the landscape. We purposely set the house back further from the water than necessary to keep that beautiful tree line that you see from the lake view. And in addition, we intend to source much of the building material and labor locally to further support our community and local economies. Um, the reason we're here today uh, is to ask for a zoning variance as, as you mentioned, uh, as the building envelope of the house we desire to build is within the setback limits of Tishner Creek uh, that runs down the northern border of the property. And after much study, the building envelope was intentionally placed where it is to minimize tree removal and protect uh, the natural elements of the property. And I won't go into all the details. I'll let uh, some folks from my team. So I'm going to turn it over to Aaron Joyce, our civil engineer, and um, also hear from Dan Hackett, our landscape architect, to talk more specifically about the property itself and, uh, and field any questions you guys have. Thanks very much. Aaron. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Uh, good evening. My name is Erin Joyce uh, with Joyce Consulting Group, um, and we are working as the civil engineers um, on this project in collaboration with Venetia and Associates. Um, as Doug had mentioned, uh, the site is really trying to capitalize on placing structures in driveway areas um, in areas that are do not have existing trees and are areas of kind of existing disturbance. That proposed house is actually in an area where there are um, a couple out, couple uh, smaller uh, buildings um, there. So we're really trying to put the house in a place where there is or there is a historical use of house. And um, we're here this evening most uh, because we do need a setback variance um, to the stream, uh, Tishner Creek, which runs along the Southern property line. Um, today, there is a shed that, there's a shed that's notably closest to the stream um, and that's approximately 49 uh, and a half feet away from the stream. We would be at our closest point with our development, uh, 37 feet, and that's actually to the pool on the south side of the house, the proposed pool. Um, so that's the area where we would be looking to get a variant setback um, from the 100 foot stream setback requirement. Um, what we're trying to do with overall site development with the driveway is snake the driveway in uh, through the existing um, treeless area that's kind of um, running through the middle of the site and then coming into the area where the existing driveway kind of is just kind of widening that area, um, but it's already kind of used for a driveway today. Um, so we're not really changing areas that are used for building and driveway um, in this development. Um, from a stormwater perspective, we're really trying to minimize the footprint. We're trying to get water into the site as soon as we can. We have a couple infiltration meadows um, scattered around the site, and those are going to be similar to a rain garden, but a little bit um, more more organic and they're just going to be these depressions where the water is is meant to infiltrate into the ground and the main collection systems will be surface collection systems that get the water um, away from the house and back into the ground so we're really trying to take a low impact approach to this and really trying to keep development in areas that um, were previously disturbed with development um, i think to try to achieve all the points that doug touched on um, and really trying to capture um, the history of the site, um, but in a modern way. So um, I'd like to turn it over now to uh, Dan Hackett, who's a landscape architect, because I think he can um, really talk about our vision for screening um, both along the stream and um, in front of the lake. So I think Dan's on at Anthony's office. I, I was going to say, I don't see him specifically. Yeah, I think he's was going to be with Anthony. Okay, um, Anthony, are you there? Can you speak up a little? You're very quiet. Is it muted? No, you're it's not just, muted, but um, yeah, you're just not very loud.
Are you there? He's muted. He's muted. Oh wait, he's coming in differently. Yeah, I think he said. I think he said he was going to call in. Or yeah. Yep. Yeah. Here he is. Um, we've got you, Anthony. You're just getting feedback from your other connection, probably. Okay. Can you can you hear us now? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Good evening. I'm uh, Dan Hackett, a landscape architect working on the project. Um, I'm with Dan Hackett, registered landscape architect, RLA. Um, I think that Aaron and Doug have both done a great summary of, uh, you know, the planning process. Just a few things to mention with how we got to where we're at. I think most importantly, you know, the objective was the sensitivity of the site and the existing trees and developing that envelope of space. Well, balancing that, um, as Aaron mentioned, with what the current setback was to the closest structure, which was 49.6 feet, um, that, that balancing to save the specimen trees and also push the house back from the lake, um, you know, the house could have been slid forward. We could have taken all the large trees out of the front and push the house 100 feet away from the lake, um, but it would really ruin the ambiance of the site. So developing that strategy and also with the grading um, and looking at the overall, again, environmental sensitivity was very important. I think that one thing I would like to mention to the board, I don't know if you've seen the letter from Kevin Albaney. Um, Kevin did visit the site uh, for a second visit. So it's his second letter. Um, Kevin and I walked through the grading. We walked through the trees to be saved. We walked through the distance from the creek and talked about the relationship. We also talked about some invasive plant species, which uh, we're going to raz and then use native species as part of our strategy. And at the end of that meeting, Kevin did um, send a new letter to the municipality. And he was um, in that letter, in fact, he said he was very, very comfortable and he was. Um, very comfortable with the distance from the stream, where we were setting the house, the trees we were saving, and felt that we were very appropriate um, with what we were doing. So again, I don't know, I'm, I'm hoping that letter got forwarded to you um, and that you have that for tonight's meeting. The letter, it, the email rather is on uh, the website. We have it. Okay, okay, great. Um, Again, I, I think that the overall strategy, Aaron went through it, you know, really in great detail. And what I don't want to do is bore you with details. Um, I would rather open it up to questions you may have and be able to answer those questions rather than, uh, you know, go on with this with the same points that have already been made by Doug and Aaron. Are there any other aspects of the uh, project you'd like to discuss before we start asking questions? Um, I, I, I think in general, no, other than this, this project is pretty unique because one of the things that we're trying to do is actually heal the earth and that, that restorative, um, landscape is we are looking at using all of natives. We're looking at not having lawns, um, the, uh, the walking areas will be managed with, uh, micro clover and, uh, grow low fescue grasses, which get six inches and that's it. Um, the client, again, with the sensitivity um, and the net zero, we don't wanna burn fossil fuels, so we don't want lawns to mow. We want it to naturalize. Um, thus, the, uh, the, the, what we're calling rain gardens or what I call rain gardens, um, we, we now have is infiltration meadows which is really the same idea. It's to capture that water, allow it, and allow the plant species that are gonna do well in hydraulic um, soil profiles, um, which this obviously is, uh, we can't think of lake being there. Um, the coming down, you know, the driveway intersect coming through, there's a few Norway maples that are gonna be removed. Um, the uh, Norway maples in a space, uh, an invasive species. Um, we're coming through some native raspberry that's in the middle and then coming out into the field. 
And again, it's really for us getting to this variance. Um, the key question was, where can we set the house? How close can we get to these specimen trees without jeopardizing them? I think if you read the tree report we submitted, um, in that report, at one point, the house was closer. We went out. Um, I did the report. We actually slid the house further west by 20 feet in order to save the sycamore. There's a couple of oak trees that are slated to be removed, um, but we kept the numbers to the very, very minimal and everything outside of the house envelope. Um, it was our objective to keep every single tree there with the exception of the one big dead ash that's filled with emerald ash borer. And when Kevin Albany was there, he looked at it and he goes, yeah, I can see it. And, um, but the, again, the objective is to have a naturalized landscape. I will note that any tree that's being removed um, and that's not dead, as in not usable, we intend to use as part of either furniture or um, structural components of the house itself. And so the intention is to still make use of um, nature and whatever exists on the property for any of the few trees that do have to get removed that Dan mentioned. I just have a, a quick question. Um, from the proposed, I'm a board member of the ZBA. Um, are you you're expanding the you're expanding the driveway, right? Or like a parking area? Is that what what I'm seeing here on this on the sketch? Or yeah, so there's an existing driveway that comes into the site where um, you can kind of see it up near where the no build zone is noted. Mm -hmm. um, that that driveway actually extends um, all the way down into the area where the proposed house is. But um, if we looked, I don't know if we have the existing conditions plan available to pull up, but that some of that line work was taken off of the site plan because I think it was getting a little hard for some people to read. So we had, so it's on the existing condition site plan, which if we maybe have that, we can look at that. But right now the driveway comes down, not in the same exact location, um, but we're trying to um, create a bigger um, green space between Tishner Point Drive and where this driveway is located. Um, so in order to do that, that we had shifted the driveway south a little bit more. Um, but there is an existing driveway that runs into the site um, a little bit north from where we're proposing it. And then it kind of goes into like a big gravel courtyard area that sits um, at the backside. There's like a there's a couple houses um, in the shed and that's like kind of like a big like gravel like parking area. So you that, can see it. You can see it there. Yeah, on page, right here. Yeah, it's three, on this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you can see okay. uh, the gap that's coming down there. Yeah. 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 So, so I would just, um, you guys seem to be really environmentally conscious and, you know, trying to do, um, you know, more uh, green friendly type of build. Um, are you considering any other types of asphalt instead of like something that's more pervious or, you know, I mean, is that something I think you've explored? I, I know that we have, as a team, talked about different materials. I don't think we've selected one, but ideally the material for the driveway would be some sort of alternative um, pervious material, whether it's a stabilized gravel or some sort of pervious. We just, for this, for the application purposes, we wanted to, as far as the driveway was, kind of portray a worst case scenario that it's going to be this, um, you know, um, plain asphalt driveway, but I think the intention would be, you know, if even just the driveway, the run at the, the access run to the court, like the courtyard area of the driveway might be a more um, environmentally friendly, for lack of a better term, surface. Um, but I don't know if we've exactly picked what that might be. Yeah, oh, we're still, I was just curious. We're still researching, yeah. but you're spot on. We don't intend to use asphalt, straight up asphalt for that driveway, but we just don't know what the material is exactly. So we're doing our research. So for purposes of the application, we sort of, as Aaron said, worst case, but it's not going to be asphalt. Right. Seems we, like you guys are going the extra mile. I just wondered if that was yeah. a consideration. So fair enough. We, we are looking at the driveway actually coming in being running strips. So it would have grass okay. or something in the middle with a right. hard surface for the tiring. Um, the main circle turnaround would be something that was impervious that would be would be the idea outside of the garage would be 
um, something that would be, a, or excuse me, pervious, and that would be pervious also. So with those materials, that is part of our strategy. And one thing I did fail to mention is along the, if you look at the plant community plan that was submitted, along the southern border um, of the stream, we are reinforcing those plant communities to provide screening for the neighbor to the south. And also, um, as mentioned with Kevin Olvaney, that will provide um, erosion uh, protection for potential overflow. And it will help, you know, divert um, if if there is a storm event um, and there is an issue that that will help slow the velocity of the water and also divert the water where it's going to follow the concourse out to the lake. So, and I think that I think that yeah, that plant community plan sort of um, shows that strategy um, pretty nicely. Right. Uh, anything else that you'd like to present? No. Uh, no, I think we just, if you have questions, we'd like to field questions and just be transparent with where we're, uh, where we're moving forward. Board members have any questions? John. John? Um, is this house going to be slab on grade? It's going to be a crawl space. Um, the earthen work around the crawl space um, is part of the grading plan. And then with that grading plan, obviously that grading plan was tightened up um, after the meeting with Kevin Albaney. Um, and actually it was tightened up prior to that. I think what happened was a miscommunication. So it was just getting it changed back. But uh, no, I, I think for uh, house utilities, the architects have that designed as um, it will be crawl space um, to allow what necessitates the infrastructure for the operation of the uh, of the home. So you're saying there there's going to be utilities in the basement? No, there will be no mechanicals in the basement. basement. There will not be mechanicals in the basement? No. <clears throat> Anything in the basement? At this time, no. Nothing planned. No, there's no plan. What's there's mean high water at that location? What's mean high at that location or? Mean high water at that, lo at that, yes. What's mean high water? The mean high water is, we're above, we're above mean high water with the grade. We're gonna be right above, um, right just above flood level. Um, the crawl space is more to help uh, elevate the house without filling in and doing structural fill inside of a wall um, system. So-, so Did you talk to Anthony? That's oh. it. Anthony, right? Anthony, is that you? Yeah, it's, it's, it's me. Um, so, so, so the space is more to facilitate getting the house elevated without having to do some sort of stem wall and structural fill on the inside, and also bringing the house up to get to that 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 two feet above flood. So the house is two feet above the floodplain. Correct. The house is the the main floor of the house is at the minimal two foot above floodplain, and the reason for the crawl space is just to facilitate raising up that house. Is the garage two foot above floodplain? I believe it is, yes. You believe it is or you know it is? Yes, it is. There you go. Yeah. The garage elevation, the garage elevation is um, 693.2. 691.2 is flood. So the house is actually three feet above flood. So at six ninety four, garage is two feet, and flood is six ninety one. So you don't need any fill at the house, then, do you? You need to bring material in, import material. No. Is the retaining wall that? Uh, runs along the creek on your side of the property. 
at a lower elevation than the retaining wall on the south side of the creek? Yes, it is in spots. Um, and that was something that Kevin Albany pointed out and we discussed. Um, the retaining wall is not going to be raised and or lowered. Um, it's going to stay exactly as it is um, in its current wanna, condition. You wouldn't want to raise the retaining wall to be the same height as the retaining wall on the south side of the creek to protect the property? Uh -huh. Well, when we spoke with Kevin Olvaney, his concern was that by raising that, we would be promoting flooding to the south. And that's not something my client was interested in doing. Uh, what we did do is the way that we raised the pool, um, that acts as a basically protection buffer to that foundation of the house. And that's part of the whole strategy of the engineering of it. Um, well, that's my next question. What's the height of the pool? What's the, the elevation pool. of the pool? The pool's at finished floor, so the south Famous wall house. of the pool is four feet out of the ground. Okay, good. And the deck that is adjacent to the pool, is that the same height? Correct. All the same. And the spa, what's the elevation of that? The same, same as the pool. And that'll be four feet. the The wall of the spa where it's elevated is four feet out of the ground. Okay. That'll be it'll be a veneered with a stone, but it's actually a structural feature. That's all my questions. Anyone else? I was just wondering: is the crawl space made of? Is it? Are you going to do it in block, or is it going to be core? Poured. It'll it'll be poured. <clears throat> um, I uh, saw the two letters from Kevin Olvaney, and the second one was certainly uh, uh, more promising. Uh, but he indicated at the end that he was going to forward his response to Chris Jensen, asking for a response and. I didn't see that in our, um, has Chris responded to to uh, uh, Kevin Olvaney's latest uh, Second, no. letter? No, okay. That's kind of a missing piece for me. I'd, I'd uh, feel bad if that, if that was uh, there, but that's not your uh, uh, you know, responsibility. And I guess the other question I have is, um, uh, have neighbors uh, either endorsed or, um, uh, criticized uh, this uh, project. I believe this might be the first time that neighbors are seeing it. I see, I see Dick's on. I don't know if I see any other neighbors on, but they've uh, they've seen pieces of this. But this is the full. They haven't seen the full picture yet. Hi, Dick. Yeah, uh, I can only speak for myself, but it, it certainly looks okay to us. Uh, I spoke briefly with Jeff, and he uh, agreed there was no surprises. So it, it seems uh, like a reasonable use of the property. Anyone else in the audience uh, wish to make a comment? Okay. Um, I guess just one question, one comment I have is that on the plan there, if you push the plan down a little bit, I think you, is the boathouse on that plan? It that, is, it's here. Okay. Yeah, one uh, issue that was raised is there is a, a deck which has been added to the boathouse, and that would have to be applied for under a separate variance. Um, As the, we did um, look at that and we did remove that deck. The plan for the boathouse <clears throat> is just to reside it. We did have an updated plan delivered to the town 
um, showing that the deck was removed and the boathouse is going to stay as is. With a, we're going to refresh the siding look. Yeah, they, and I, I was down there looking in. I guess the boathouse had been filled in at some point in the past. Yeah. So I guess I'm not sure it's <laughs> it still like, a boathouse. It's been like that for a while too. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Yeah. There's no plans to alter the usage or anything of the boathouse. Um, okay, then I wouldn't need anything for that time then. Um, anyone else on the board? Okay. Are the applicants uh, satisfied with the uh, material that you've presented? And anything additional to add or if not i could close the uh you'd be comfortable with closing the public hearing i'm satisfied anything else from anyone else on my team no i i i think that uh i think we discussed everything other than if someone on the board had you know additional questions we could answer um it's a uh, it's a very unique project um and I think it's a different approach of looking at things. And I hope it turns out to be a model for uh, future development. Kelly, you have anything? I'm good. I asked all the questions I needed to know, so. Okay. Okay, if there are no further questions or information you'd like to present, we'll close the public hearing. Uh, we have 62 days to make a decision, uh, but uh, typically would make a decision this evening, which is fairly safe to say since it's a short agenda. So thank you. You're welcome to stay stay on and uh, observe our discussion and uh, voting. Okay, uh, the next uh, application is Venezia Associates representing Timberwind. LLC, owner of property at 6170 Dugway Road, requesting an area variance for road frontage of 32 feet when 225 feet is required in the R R3 district, zoning district. 193 foot variance is requested. Anthony, are you doing that? Uh, yes, I'll be doing that. <clears throat> so currently the owner of the, uh, my name is Anthony Venezia, I'm representing um, Mr. DeMarco on this project for 6170 Dugway Road. So the plan that um, Mr. DeMarco is, is to subdivide lot two off of the main parcel. Um, currently, um, Joel has a individual that has been leasing, renting, kind of to own that home. He's done some, some improvements to the home and now he, they would like to do the land transfer. So in order to facilitate that, the subdivision we do have to come before the board to create a um an under fronted lot um typically in this area we don't um we don't like to do the, the flag lots but in this situation we do have four other flag lots in this area that were done um before us so our flag is the same size it's actually a little bit wider than the other flags to the east um, as we go back to the larger piece um, it is a 30 foot width. Um, there is enough room there to get a driveway in. Um, there is a driveway that parallels it, a, a, a laneway that goes to the north to access the other four properties to the east and to the north. Um, if there's any questions, I could definitely answer them to, uh, to help understand the project. You said other there's four other properties to the north and to the east. You can see those, if you look at the plan, there's four flags, they're each, well, there's three flags, they're each 20 feet wide. So there's, they go all the way back and then they access this, the northern property off of Dugway and that's the, all their access. They all have a right of way over that laneway that's there. So you can see, if you look at the northeast, they all come into a point. There's one to the, the Yakuza property right directly to the north. There's another one to the east, and then Joel owns that center lot that goes even farther north to open up to his other property to the north. So he does own that property that is in the is the middle flag. You see here. 
Yeah. That's I can't mistake. distinguish the four lots that he's talking it's about. Three lots. I, 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 it's three lots. This would be the fourth. All right. I'm going to pull it up on Encore just so we can get a better look at it. Doing that, the fourth lot that Anthony was talking about looks to be like two lots over to the west is another flag lot. Yeah, there's quite a few of them in that area that have been done over the years. So we've got oh. this one. Wow, this is the one you're talking about. As you sh are you sharing that part? I just see the site plan right now. Oh, sorry. It's for some reason when I, okay, hold on. Thanks for telling me that. All right, there we go. This okay. one. This one goes all the way back. Mm -hmm. Where's the other one? The one directly north. The one directly north to him, there's that one. Yep. Then there's the piece directly to the north. This one. Okay, so there's three. And then, yep, and then to the then to the east. Yep. So and there's also there's another flag lot that is that goes farther to the west. It's not part of the, the flags that we're talking to, but just down to the west, maybe seven or eight hundred feet, there's another flag lot that you could see where the, the pine trees are. So that's the same the same type of thing that it doesn't have. It doesn't meet the required frontage in that district. Okay. The sixty two hundred would be the the address. Okay, so we've got. Hold on. John, can you see that? One, two, three. One, two, three. They're all um, three. coming off of that one shared road. Yep. Is that what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so they come up here. Well, yeah, this one. Yeah, they all come off. Of yeah, that they way. all come off of that road. Yeah, right? those, those flag lots must have been created prior to. I've been on the board for quite a while, and Chip can probably talk to this. I don't. I don't recall ever creating a flag lot, so I don't know where those originally came from. So, I don't think that's come before this board. It may be the planning board. They approved it. It probably did it at some point. I don't know exactly when they were done. The planning board. I mean, it's, it's a no, that would it could have been a long time ago where it didn't come in front of the board. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not entirely yeah. sure of when that would have been done, but we're just kind of using it as a reference for the area and what's there, what's currently there, and the character of the neighborhood and things of that nature per the zoning questions. Yeah, we have to go. I mean, we have to. Looks like there's another, there's another flag lot just as the. It goes from paved to unpaved on the south side of it, I think. Here? No, I don't know. I was looking there today and it looked hard to say from this, but not here. here. A driveway will which went through it looked like to a prep the house behind. Are you talking about the, this is this house here? No, I'm talking about further to further the west. West on Dugway, right where it turns into. Now that might be in the town of Bristol. Oh, I suppose Bristol, the town line is right. There. Yeah, once you get past the once you get past the pavement, it, it, you turn into a different township. So. Okay. Oh, 
Well, I guess the reason to bring that up there is because we're just kind of showing that it's not out of the ordinary for this particular section of where we're at on Dugway Road, since there are three rather large properties to the north of us that, that utilize a, a flag, if you will. Um, also, there's no plans on doing any kind of development. It's going to stay raw land um, for the for the future. Um, it's just a piece of land. And like I said, the, the, the current individual that has been using the house would like to purchase the land so we could do with it. You know, he can upgrade it and do things of, that, you know, will help him in the future um, as he is owning it. It looks like on the back properties, there might be certainly some issues about uh, steep slopes and everything else up in there. And if that were to, you know, subsequently be to, uh, developed. So, so the reason we're creating another flag lot is because there's already so many flag lots. I mean, is that what I'm understanding? Or no, I mean, the reason is the reason for creating it is Mr. DeMarco owns owns the land. And there's an individual that that lives in the house. The individual would like to purchase the house instead of renting it, and they do not want the large piece. And Mr. DeMarco would like to retain the large piece. And in order to do that, we don't we don't have enough to give both lots the equal amount of frontage. Mm -hmm. So we are going to give the one the one lot the 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 lot that is the current house the greater amount of frontage and then we have access we can get a road back into mr marco's piece so he can use it a laneway for his own private use the reason for the flag lot is because we do not have enough frontage for two individual lots with the zone per zoning frontage so we're giving the bulk up to one instead of try to split it up and have two variances and only have one because that and, lot, that and the other lots are center. owned by somebody else mr demarco owns the center of the flag lot that runs all the way past he doesn't own the east or the west he doesn't own the one that parallels us he owns the other one where his piece is only 20 feet away if he was a if he if he owned the piece that was immediately adjacent not 20 feet away we could have done a lot line revision and we wouldn't have had to go to subdivision. But due to the fact that there is a owner in between, it has to be its own separate parcel. Does the owner own where the lot is where the pine trees are? Which pine trees? To the west? To the south, or is it? I, I can't remember. Wait, which, where, which pine trees? Right, right there. Here? No, no. Yeah. No, that's a separate parcel to the east. Okay. So he owns in the middle, the middle. Flag. He owns the middle flag. If you were to highlight, if you were to highlight the middle flag, yeah. that is the property that he owns. Which is Johnson Hill LLC. Johnson Hill LLC. Yes. That's him. Oh, that's the other. That's Yakuzo. That's him. Yes, Yakuzo owns the east and the west flag, and Mr. DeMarco owns the middle, the middle piece, the middle lot. The middle. And they all have a right away across that. Correct. Got it. He is Johnson Hill. Okay. John, do you need to see any more of this? Do you want me to zoom in? No, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. Anything more you want to add, Anthony? I don't think so. I'm not sure if Joe would like to introduce anything um, if he's on the call. But... I'm on the call, Joel DeMarco. Um, no, I, I, I'm just here to uh, answer any questions if I could or if they are needed. Um, but uh, Anthony, you, you summed it up pretty well from my perspective. Any more questions from the board? 
Have we done, uh, uh, had this issue come up recently? I, I'm not, uh, I'm trying to uh, remember. Uh, this one uh, seems like pretty original uh, in my, since I've been with the group. We've, I've had a couple other flag lots. Uh, I don't remember where the last one was. Different circumstances though, right, Chip? I mean, like, yeah. Yeah. they were, we weren't really, we're not in the habit of creating flag lots, put it that way, but this one seems slightly, you know, slightly different from anything we've seen over the years. And yeah, I think that. Yeah. Anyone else here? Kelly, you okay? I'm good. Okay. Um, is there anyone in the audience who would like to address this issue? Wait until Shauna gets back to you can scan the audience. It's 32. Yeah. 30. It's 30. So this is 195. Yeah. I thought the other one makes like 37. Um, let me look. Oh, everybody's got their cameras off. Okay. I don't see anybody. Uh, Anthony, are you satisfied with what you presented and uh, agree to closing it this time? Yes. Okay. Uh, we'll close the uh, public hearing and uh, we do have 62 days to make a decision, but we'll hopefully make a decision tonight. Uh, okay, that's all of the public hearings that we have for tonight. Um, let's discuss them. Uh, the first one is the Titchener Point uh, request for the setback from the stream 33 feet when 100 feet is the minimum, 67 foot variance is requested. Uh, Kelly, you chime in whenever you want, okay? I, I sure will. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I'll give you my opinion right? now. I, okay. I, I like that they are trying to, uh, you know, preserve what's there. And I and I do like that they are being conscious of what you know, uh, trying to be more green, you know, in that area. It's kind of a very sensitive area, in my opinion. Anybody else on the board? I, I feel the same. I think as Bob does on this. Between I, I think the water quality is not going to be an issue. I'm. And I'm hoping maybe John's addressed the structure enough between what Chris Jensen wrote. That that's a little troubling to me. But and I haven't seen anything different from Chris on it. And um, I think it's a nice project. Um, I'm glad to see that the walls are poured. I mean, all of that helps in you know as far as structurally to keep this the thing there. That that can be a rip torrent that creek, but. Um, it certainly looks as though this would be no closer, I don't believe, to the creek than the structure on the other side. Which probably the structure on the other side is about five feet from the, from the edge. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I, it, it's very close. Not only that, but it's long against. Right. You know, right. I, I'm not comfortable voting until we get a nod from uh, from Chris, uh, just because. Uh, uh, Kevin Alvaney mentioned, uh, you know, uh, Chris and and um, um, expecting his response. So I, I I feel there's the loose end here. I, I like the presentation and I agree with what everyone said, but I uh, uh, I feel like there's one part that's not in place. Chris is not on. Oh. No, no, he's not. But. I'd point out that there's a recommendation of denial from the Ontario County Planning Board on this variance, which means you would for vote right. to uh, pass. Well, we can, I mean, obviously, if Bob's not comfortable until he hears what Chris has to say, I mean, it sounds like we're going to have to vote on tabling it. 
or if the applicant feels comfortable that they've got four votes, they can move forward, right? Correct. Right. Yes. It's more up to the applicant than it is to us. In my right. Opinion. Sure. Or at least they have a choice. I mean, from, from my perspective, we, I guess we can ask them that. You could ask them that. Ask the applicant. Know, wait, you could, yeah. the... I'll express my opinion first, but yeah. you could ask the applicant. I mean, I feel very comfortable with it from the aspect that the finished floor elevation of the existing cottage was 692.1. And they're raising the floor elevation of the proposed house to 694.2 and the average elevation is 693.78, which are both above the floodplain in this area. So I'm pretty comfortable with that. Um, I also think that the fact that the shed that they had there was probably below the floodplain and it's being removed and that was closer to the creek than the house is going to be. Um, not as close to the creek as the proposed swimming pool is going to be, but um, I'm comfortable with it. I think they've done a good job with it and uh, met all of the concerns. So, Chris, and now, John, on, on top of that, the swimming pool, I think that's actually, there's a property down the road that we approved and the swimming pool, I think, is even closer, isn't it? Might be, yeah. Yeah, yeah that one, the swimming pool was between the house and the lake. And the lake. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's right. But they did have some a creek there as well, but they moved some of the, you know, facilities across the road or whatever it was at the time. Right. And I think if I heard correctly, they said the swimming pool was at the same elevation as the finished floor of the house. Yes. So, um, yeah, I think they've done a good job myself. I, I want to confirm with Chris Nadler, but I generally, wouldn't be recommended to ask the applicant as a board somebody to make some motion and then go from there. To ask the owner and to open it back up, you're saying? Uh, what, do you, I mean, what are you going to ask the owner, the applicant? Well, nobody on the board is going to ask anything. You're going to ask after the board, after the, the reason I raised the point was because for the applicant to make an informed decision, the applicant's going to have to hear from. I would get get a gist, and and John just stepped up and said, "Here, you know, here's here's the gist of where I am on this." Um, um, you know, so once all the board members have sort of given their two cents, their their thoughts on the project, the applicant. You could ask the applicant, would you like the board to reopen this hearing and hold it over, or would you like the board to vote? It's not the applicant's decision, it's the board's decision. Right. But the board want to wish to uh, take that into consideration. I will point out that, that I would recommend um, any variance granted be conditioned on uh, the condition in Kevin's email, it says, it concludes with, if Chris Jensen is satisfied with the certification provided by the engineer regarding stream flow, fleet, stream flood flow conveyance, then I'm comfortable with the variance being granted. Um, I would say, regardless, any variance should be conditioned on Chris Jensen signing off on stream flood flow conveyance. Did you all see the email too with Chris? Chris Jensen's um, note to be made on the plans. Well, that's what I'm referring to. But I mean, the issue is, it, it, it's it's a it's a vague reference to you know the possibility you know down the line something could happen. But I, you know, obviously it makes a difference to hear John's opinion on it because I, I'm just, you know, from a construction standpoint, uh, I'm not going to argue with John. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I guess I was impressed with how much Kevin Alvini, Alvini uh, adjusted or changed his opinion on the project based on, based his, on his walking walk out there. With, and, yeah. um, I mean, even if we wait and, and, and we talk, you know, and Chris gives another email, I, I don't know what it's it's going to what what can he say other than I mean, what he said was pretty 
he was non-committal certainly he he was you know it, and i don't see how he can change that um, certainly not to the negative aspects of things yeah. after the new letter from kevin mm -hmm. do you want to go ahead and we'll call the question and vote or do you think it's worthwhile um letting the should we let the applicant know about the issue of a super majority i think it would be courteous yeah. to open it up and ask the applicant yes okay and i'll make a motion that we open it up and ask the applicant okay i'll, I'll second it if it needs to be in favor all right Aye. Okay, so we have opened up the uh, public hearing again, and uh, I guess Mr. Bennett, you're there, and, and Anthony. The question has come up, um, you know, we've not heard from Chris Jensen on this yet, because this came through just, I think, at the end of last week. Um, we've had... Uh, possibility of someone wanting to wait for Chris's decision before making this a uh, uh, final vote. Uh, it is, it was recommended to be turned down by the county board, which makes it necessary for our decision to be a super majority. So it would be four out of five, instead of just a, a simple majority, which would be three out of five. Um, I be interested in your opinion about we we could offer the uh option of holding the public hearing open uh until next month give us a chance to get uh, uh chris jensen's opinion back and then vote with that added um or we can go ahead and vote tonight uh once again if if there were two people against it uh that would would make it a negative vote well, just just to try to inform you on that and give you a little bit of an opportunity to see what your thoughts would be. Mr. Bennett or Yeah, I don't know if I don't know if um Doug might have stepped away. All right, I'm um, I'm think, back. I'm back. Oh, there now. you are. I'm back. I uh I, I just had to check on my kids. Um, I came in at the I came in at the middle of it all. Uh, so the question is whether or not we want to well, the, this, given we haven't heard from uh, Chris Jensen. Yeah, the county planning board uh, recommended that we uh, deny this. Now, having said that, they recommend we deny most anything on the way. But um, that means, though, that we have to have a supermajority to approve the variance. So it would be four out of five instead of three out of five. That, normal simple majority would be um there's been some concern raised about not having heard back from uh chris jensen uh regarding the most recent letter from kevin albany albany um and you know i i, I guess i think everyone would feel a little bit more comfortable but i think other people i think are ready to I'm reading people right. Other people would be willing to vote now. So, um, if you if you want to, I guess it's not throwing the dice about that. But uh, if you want us to hold open uh, or uh, you know carry over the hearing to next month until we have a hearing, a time to hear back from Chris Jensen, um, that would be we could do that. You go ahead and vote tonight. I think any vote tonight would have to have the, one of the conditions being that Chris um, approves this. I think, am I correct on that? Yeah. Doug, to give you some perspective well, on timelines, uh, that would be uh, February 15th, DBA, and then February 22nd, Planning Board. Got it. Okay. So okay. if I could interject just ask a quick question um if we table it tonight and chris gives us an okay we go back to the next zoning board meeting at the end of february to get a positive well a vote hopefully the, it's a positive vote if it's voted tonight 
and we get an approve approval from the zoning board, but Chris Jensen denies it, where would that put us? If that's one of the conditions. So either way, we either wait and if get it's approval or we get denied. Then you would be in a position where you couldn't meet the conditions of the variance, and so you would have no variance. Right. Let me be clear, and this is sort of a, I'm posing this question to the zoning board. Uh, not, um, you know, I'm this on my laptop, um, and and flipping back and forth between Kevin's comments today, dated today, um, and he says very comfortable with the variance. Provided Chris Jensen is satisfied with the certification provided by the engineer regarding stream flood flow conveyance. Chris Jensen raises a bunch of different issues in his emails. Or is the outstanding issue that, that Bob, that you're concerned with, is that Chris Jensen hasn't indicated with the stream flood flow conveyance calculations? Or are there other outstanding issues that that you want to hear out from Chris? Uh, all of the above. I I don't feel closure. I I don't. I'm not for or against uh, the project. So I just I need more information. I, if it wasn't for the fact that the way this works, and and Kevin mentioned uh, Chris's uh, response, you know, come in response, I probably wouldn't have uh, raised the issue. But because Kevin raised the issue, I'm just uh, uh, you know um, continuing with that with that thought. To me, it's a loose end. But so the only loose end in your mind is that Chris Jensen hasn't agreed with the engineer's stream flood flow conveyance. Uh, that's the, that's what Chris Jen, that's what Kevin's email says. Unless I'm missing something. Um, I'd have to go back to the to the exact wording of uh, what Kevin Olvaney in the closing uh, part of his uh, of his letter said. If you have it in front, if somebody has it in front of you, can, right we can read it. That might be helpful. He says, if Chris Jensen is satisfied with the certification provided by the engineer regarding stream flood flow conveyance. And for all reasons stated, I am comfortable with a variance being granted in this area. That was last Thursday. Right, right, yeah. right here. No, oh, that was today, I think. No, that was no. no that was today, right. to the website, but it was sent last Thursday. Yeah. Rarely are there there. Um, yeah. oh, no, exactly. Yeah. Conditions that a zoning board can impose. This is one, you know, that is. If your concern is that Chris Jensen hasn't indicated his satisfaction with the engineer's uh, stream flood flow conveyance, variance subject to Chris Jensen doing that. Um, if your concern is the other concerns that Chris Jensen raised, um, you know, that's a different. That's a horse of a different color. I'd like to hear. Uh, I'd like to hear Chris uh, Chris uh, Jensen's testimony. That's really where where I'm at. Um, you know, in terms of what satisfied means. I, you know, so and I just I'd like to hear Chris's uh, testimony. Or uh, you know, uh, I'd like to see uh, what he has to say on the record. I see the distinction now, Bob. I was thinking okay. of more object. But I see your distinction. Yeah, could I could I briefly be heard? My name is Robert Brenner. I'm I'm counsel to the applicant, and you know, hearing Mr. Nadler's proposal loud and clear, you know, just to be candid about this project, the the client here, you know, cares deeply for the property. This this project is distinct from from many of the projects around Canandaigua Lake that that I've personally been involved in. You know, that this isn't an effort to to try to you know construct a, a large home on a small non-conforming lot so so candidly the applicant here cares deeply for what chris jensen's comments are so i would ask that the board proceed with a vote with the express condition if you're inclined to approve that we have to satisfy mr jensen on the the stream flow because to put it bluntly if, if we can't 
I, I don't think, you know, the owner here would, would want to proceed without the town's full blessing on the project. He, he cares deeply about doing the right thing for the property. So either way, we want to satisfy Mr. Jensen. So, you know, a, a condition that would require us to satisfy his desires around stream flood flows would be perfectly acceptable to us and, and understood that we need to satisfy him before we can pull a building permit. Okay. I'm sorry. I think we go ahead with the vote then personally. That's that's my opinion. Okay, I need before we do that, because so we can craft a nice condition. And Aaron, can you provide some expertise for my edification? What is stream flood flow conveyance um, certification for <clears throat> what is that? Is that a uh, number or is that a, a design? Um, so we had put a note on the site plan to, um, as a, I think maybe is what is being referred to as um, that certification. Um, there isn't really a simple answer to that. You know, there's so many different scenarios that that looks at what is historically and typically modeled in the in the Finger Lakes watersheds when they're sizing culverts under roads and after flood events and they're looking at resizing stuff or upsizing stuff you typically look at a 25 year design storm. Um, but sometimes you know these gully washers that they talk about like are so off the charts and nothing like those design storms. So what we looked at is a 25 year design storm and the stream conditions for that because that's what is typically used for that sort of analysis. So that's what we had used and that's what notation we had placed on the site plan. Um, down in the bottom right corner of our site plan, there's a certification. And I think that's been what Kevin has been, um, Kevin Olvaney's been um, just like, that's what was added after having met on site with Kevin Olvaney and talk through the concerns and look at some of the, he had a picture um, of some ice um, from a stream event um, several years ago that we had looked at um, and used as part of what we were looking at trying to mitigate, um, you know, cause not only is our project looking to protect you know this new home that the owner is building but we also can't make it worse anywhere else which is part of the reason why we're not adjusting that northern stream wall um and not doing really any changes on that stream corridor you know we probably will do some maintenance to try to clean out some debris because usually when there are the large events it's really the debris that causes the problems either it clogs stuff up and creates flooding in the waterway or whatnot so um I think the certification we are making is related to a 25 year design storm and it is related to the flow of the stream and I think that's what Kevin has has um, noted that note on our plan I think he is referring to as the stream certification. Which note is it? Can you read the note or can we see the note? Um, I can read the note. If you look at Chris, Chris Nadler, I yeah. pulled up um, Chris Jensen's email too that references um, everything he wanted with the convergence of the stream and that minimum um, design standards, flood resistance standards, basically saying that the applicant just acknowledges what may happen. Okay. Um. So I can read our, I can read what we had put on the site plan um, and then, then there's the secondary aspect that the project will be constructed to um, match the requirements of floodplain construction. And, you know, so I think there's two elements. There's um, the flow of the stream and then there's the floodplain. So I think the owners acknowledging the construction requirements and then we're noting the stream event water flow like the potent that that aspect of it like where happen. is this note they just said so it's where it says pools south wall is elevated above the ground grade by four feet south pool wall is structural in nature to withstand potential debris and water flow from high flow stream events greater than 25 years storm event design storm that's even greater than 25. No. Okay. 
Okay. Any uh, thing further? Anybody want to go over? Um, are you comfortable with us closing this public hearing again, uh, Mr. Bennett or Anthony? Yes, I'm comfortable. Who is that? I can't this see. Is Doug. I like Doug. Sorry, this is Doug. I'm comfortable. Okay. All right. Is the committee, is the uh, board comfortable with closing the public hearing? The planning board also is, will be doing a thorough review, and MRB has already done so. I think the client's attorney, or the applicant's attorney, said it all. Yeah. You know, so, to me. Okay. Well, okay. Mr. Chairman, if you wanted to call a vote, it could or you don't have to uh, call a vote on the variance and then, and then do a vote on conditions to be added afterwards. Right. Or alternatively, you could call a vote on a variance with the condition. Right. Might be a better idea in this case. I think, uh, Kelly, are you ready to vote? Yes. yes. <laughs> um, you'd like to wait. We have. I, yeah, just the missing piece. I'm not. I'm not against. I'm just not uh, comfortable with. Uh, okay. I think we have four of us. I think that are ready to vote. So I guess that we'll go ahead and call the question. Then. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Which, Mr. Chairman? Yes. With the condition or without the condition? Why don't you do it without the condition and then any members can make a motion for conditions afterwards? Okay. Thank you, Chris. CPN 21-097. The applicant is requesting a 33-foot setback from a stream when 100 feet is the minimum. Shall the applicant be granted a 67-foot stream setback area variance? John? Yes. David? Yes. Kelly? Yes. Bob? No. And Chip? Yes. Okay, so the motion is passed. And then maybe if somebody wanted to say so moved, I say something that might be a good way to do this uh, with a condition that uh, Chris Jensen uh, indicate in writing his satisfaction with the certification related to stream flood flow conveyance. Condition of the uh, variance is granted specific to the plans and materials submitted. Uh, any deviation from the plan submitted to validate the variance. And then condition number three, uh, that the variance is good for, so uh, is conditioned upon building permits being issued within one year of today's date. If they aren't, the variance will be invalidated so, do you need a motion and i'll i'll move for that one or okay, okay. so you're moving that we use those conditions is that correct yeah. okay your second second okay. um any more discussion okay uh let's see we ought to probably do a individual vote on that motion, I guess. So, yes. You can call it then. Uh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> this is the motion to accept condition. Yes. the condition of Chris, uh, Chris Jensen. John Casey? Yes. Bob? All right, okay, so don't ask you because you said no. Right? Is that how it works? Chris, no. can Bob vote on the the motion if you didn't if you voted to deny or if you voted against I'm just thinking about that yes of course okay, okay. Yeah, this is on all three conditions right 
Yes. 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 Then I vote yes. So John, John said yes. Sorry. Okay. Bob, yes. David? Yes. Kelly? I made the motion, so yes. Okay. Still got to right. vote. <laughs> Still got to vote. And Mr. Saylor? Yes. Okay, that motion passes. Uh, I would recommend maybe I can prepare prepare some findings of fact, given that this is a sensitive parcel. Um, I'd love to have you do that. <laughs> uh, I'll send, yeah, but you're going to wind up with them, Jeff. Um, and then actually, um, yeah, I'll submit, I'll send over findings of fact for, for chip approval and then subsequent uh, approval at your next meeting by full. But the decision sheet can be signed with the findings of fact as per chip's approval. And then I'll have you ratify the, by the entire board. I guess one question I would have is uh, when we would need to hear from Chris Jensen on this, I guess. I, mean, I would. Um, that's a well, good I think sooner this week because the planning board is going to want right. that for their deliberations next Tuesday. You know, that actually, um, the zoning board doesn't have to hear from Chris Jensen at all. The zoning board can request that he report to them, but the variance subject to that condition has been granted um, prior to building permits being issued in reliance on that variance. Uh, Chris Jensen will have to satisfy himself. So it really, there's no time, there's no deadline on Chris Jensen uh, being and I think that's a good thing because he may say I would be satisfied except that I don't see such and such and then Aaron can revise the plans if you know if necessary uh, and so before Chris issues a building permit Chris will have to he's been satisfied I agreed Chris but again because of the planning board is taking a comprehensive look at it and maybe you know and voting next tuesday i would like to ask chris if he can get something i think that makes sense uh, i agree shauna good point okay. anything further anybody can think of that was very straightforward <laughs> right <laughs> okay. Sure. okay so we'll go on to the next thank uh, you thank you yeah next experience uh yes, guys. on uh dugway road Discussion board. I hate granting a variance for another flag lot, but it's kind of a it's it's definitely different from the, the other parcels we've seen that they've wanted to create a flag lot. We've we really haven't favored the flag lot, you know, variances, but I don't know. I mean, this is kind of a challenging piece of property. Somebody made it this way. Right. <laughs> More than one. Yeah. I mean, three, three times over. I mean, it, it looks like, it, you know, it's it's just rolling stone. It doesn't seem like it's, it's hard for me to visualize this thing not ever being resolved. Well, especially with, isn't there a, a, a parcel owner in the middle or how I, I was confused at that whole thing, you know? There was the parcel owner, the, the applicant, a, a different family, the applicant, and then another. Three, right. three I think the owners. two that kind of flank the, um, the owner on the, the same owner, Timber, Timberwind, although it's just a different LLC. Um, yeah, I believe that's it. So it was applicant, different owner, applicant, different owner. Right? Am I right? Well, oh, who's on? Anthony, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. I got that right, right? It's at the applicant, other property, Yakuza, the applicant, and then Yeah, so it's, it's, 
the applicant owns the piece in question, and then there's the 20 foot that's just to the east of him that touches. There's a there's the Yakuzo, that's the, the first 20 foot going from east to west. And then the middle flag lot is Johnson Hill LLC, which is, is which owned is by Mr. DeMarco. DeMarco, okay. And then Yakuzo is on the other and side. And then another, another Yakuzo is on the other side. Correct. Thank you. Got it. Good afternoon, separate driveways. Yeah, and then that's the other option. <laughs> I mean, if we don't approve it, what do they do? They, yeah. Are they are all three of them? I mean, they're all three separate driveways. Is what it what it looks like, right? Or no? Oh, it's common, isn't it? Up to the back of that one property, where so it's a shared driveway. This is uh, Joel Demarco. That's correct. It's a shared driveway. Okay. They could just do what it, what what my neighbors did, just make it a private road and everybody shares the driveway. <laughs> I don't know. So it's common up. So here to, it goes. To, yeah, common. To the... And then it splits. Well, yeah, we can't. See. It splits at the up right here. Yeah. This is Joel Demarco. It's common past the property. It, does it go right past the property line and then it splits? It Here. goes past the property line. It goes the first uh, 25 acres square on the uh, west side, side of that road is um, uh, is where at the end of that lot is where it splits. And that's where my other parcel starts again. I guess theoretically we're not supposed to take more information, but I think we can ask for clarification. Does that sound reasonable? You can absolutely ask for clarification. I mean, essentially, so Chris, this could be a question for you. What's what's not to say do like like I like I had just said, like a private road, you know. I mean, then wouldn't be a flag lot issue, right? Or would it? Well, a private road, I guess you could do that, but there isn't a private road here. There's a shared driveway. Right, and then you're creating a landlocked parcel, basically. Yeah, this, this, this solution is far better from a planning perspective than angling off a private road. That being said, okay. I, I mean, it seems likely or possible that the lot one is gonna be off this shared driveway rather than okay. all a completely separate driveway. That's fine. Um, as long as there is access from a planning perspective, there's absolutely adequate access to this flag parcel, lot number one. It's, you know, significantly less this than all the other flag lots those are broken flag lots they then turn left and then and this is just a straight flag lot you know there's already one two three parcels adjacent to this existing as flag lots you know, from a planning. So they have their own cut in the, in the road. Is that what, or is it? But they have the three driveways, right? Or, or am I wrong? It looks like one driveway. Okay. Going north, then east, then north again. There's one private lane. There's one laneway that services all three of them. And it sort of swerves back and forth between <laughs> between the individual lots. Um. And then it forks at the boundary. I guess if we were to refuse this, we're creating several landlocked parcels, aren't we? No. 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 New lot. That this would be a new lot, new flat lot. The so owner wants to sell the house, right? Yeah, that's, the house. It's yeah, a house that, lot, yeah, right? But I'm they, thinking the other properties back there. It won't. Oh. Affect 
<laughs> to be very clear, the other flag lots were just cited by Anthony as, an, as examples. They don't mm -hmm. actually have anything to do with this. Right. Oh, okay. Those are to the those are separate from. Those are pre-existing. The two vertical red lines. Okay. Right next to each other, are part of lot number one, and then lot number one opens up into a big flag of eighteen acres. The three okay. vertical black lines immediately to the right of those two red lines are three other lots that don't really have anything to do with lot one or lot two. Got it. I think Anthony's point was the character of the neighborhood is going to change by adding another vertical line here when you've already got three. Right. Which, by the way, I've never seen. I've never <laughs> seen three like that. It was before my time, right? I'm certain of it. <laughs> What zone is this in? Pardon? It's rural residential three, RR three. And the prohibition against flag lots is code wide. Is that correct, Shauna? Yeah. Yes. It just there's it's in dash nine, I think. I'm assuming. So what I didn't hear the first part. Is the prohibition against flag lots in 220-9? That precludes all flag lots? Correct. Right. I think it is. Yeah, I know that we're, we've, we haven't in the past really, you know, that, that's been a hard no. So I don't know in this, in this circumstance either, so. I'd have to look that. I mean, I'm not aware of that, Chris. Yes, where it, is it particular to this zoning district is what I'm trying to. Right. Is there a specific prohibition for rural residential three of flag lots? I can do it above the code right okay. now. You're looking. I'm taking a look. So I don't see where it is. I guess I don't see the specific mission in the rural residential three. So Chris. Like I thought, sorry, I thought flag lots were just kind of like a, almost like a, it didn't matter what was zoning district it was in. I thought they were pretty like shun, I want to say, from the town perspective. Uh, not a great idea, but, okay. you know, I keep, I said several times here from a planning perspective, but that's not really your charge. Your charge is to weigh your variance tests and right. see if it's appropriate or not. Okay. I, don't, I don't think it specifically says, I mean, if it comes down, all the flag lots, I think basically come down to a variance for the- For the front end. Front end. I didn't, I mean, I don't, I'm not aware of anything that, that prohibits them. I, no. Um, you know, and Chris, Chris and I talked, Johnson and I talked about this one for a while. What was, what was the nature of that conversation? Um, it was the, the, we looked at the provision, we have a provision in the code, I'm not going to, about lot length versus width, basically, yeah. 
is it two and a half times? I'd have to, it might be in my ZLD, um, but that's where flag lots can be created. So you have to watch. I'd have, I can't, I'd have to get the reference to the code, uh, but that I don't think, not, yeah, I don't think we need it. I just, yeah. yeah. Chris, I, you know, I looked at this from the perspective of originally, you know, when were these other flag lots created versus when was the code established? But then I started rethinking it and I thought we have to base our decision on the five criteria. And it would, this is a unique situation. It would be very difficult for us to go and say no to this particular request when immediately adjacent to it, there's already three individual driveways leading to flag lots adjacent to it. I mean, I, yeah. How do you say no to that, regardless of the circumstances? Even if there was uh, something prohibiting flag lots, I mean, still we have to go back to the unique situation and whether it meets the five criteria that we are to judge the order, the variances by. And I mean, the thing to do is go through those five criteria. I mean, I think it, I think it meets all the criteria. I mean, you, you can't say no, in my opinion. You can't say no when you got three driveways leading to three individual flag lots immediately adjacent to it. Doesn't change the character of the neighborhood. It doesn't change, <laughs> it doesn't change well, the character. Not, not, there's no uh, building permits permitted on those lots, on those flag lots. Yeah. And would would there be issues, you know, for, for that? They'd have to get variances for that, I assume, right? For for single family development. Is that what we're talking about? Single family. Yeah, so they're so they're golden already. It would it's depend. I mean, the, yeah, they're. I mean, lot size. They're definitely um, big enough. I the driveways. We'd have to look at the length for you know public or for safety issues. But well, I mean, so you, I can't say you, that you can look from the allowed. five here on this. Is is it substantial? Yeah, I'd say it's pretty substantial. Is it self created? I'd say yeah. Um, well, I got two. <laughs> so it's not like it's well I, mean, I can't I can't I've got to give it character of the neighborhood I will agree with you on that but... <laughs> well do we want to go ahead and vote <clears throat> I don't know if there's anything else that needs to be said about it Kelly okay. you okay with voting I guess <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Let's call the question then. What was was there any recommendation for denial on this one? So it didn't go to the county. It wouldn't go to the, the county. county. Okay. Simple majority then. I would recommend to the board that you detail your justification, uh, just because I know that you're going to have another flag lot coming in probably in March. So I would just want you to to cover all bases. I was going to say I'll I'll draft findings if uh, well either way. Thank you, Chris. Right. Okay, but, but I just want to be clear, Chip. Don't get used to this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this a favor are you doing? You're trying You're to chairman? break me in easily, <laughs> gently. It's these particular applications, but I don't want this to become a habit. <laughs> I'll leave that out. Okay, let's go ahead. Michelle's not putting that in the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> CPN 21-098, uh, Venezia Associates for Timberwind, LLC. The applicant is requesting an area variance to have a 30-foot road frontage when 225 feet is the minimum. Shall the applicant be granted a 190-foot 195 foot area variance for road frontage. John? Yes. Bob? No. Dave? No. Kelly? No. Chip? Yes. Okay, so let's. This is, this is terrible, but can you recall the vote? With 193 foot variance. That that's what is on the agenda is not. There's a 
what was advertised is correct. It's not a 195. It's a 30 foot probe frontage. Okay. Yep. Sorry. It's okay. Thank you for catching that, but we, we caught it too. Okay. Um, let's see. Reasons as depicted in the descriptions and drawings provided at the meeting. Um, benefit to the applicant. I'll do findings. Pardon me? I'll, I'll draft findings for this one. Okay. okay. All right. Um, let's see. Any requests for rehearings? Uh, board business, referrals from the town board, anything from the Nothing town board? Nothing from the town board. Ordinance committee hasn't met, in, but will be reconvening soon. Okay. We have our 2021 uh, rules for procedures, rules of procedures for the Belmont Board of Appeals. Uh, I went through those. I didn't, we changed a couple things last year, but I don't see anything different now that we need to think of. Uh, Anybody has any, anything there? Uh, oh. On, on paragraph 10 on the second page, uh, under rehearings, um, on such rehearing, the zoning board may reverse, modify, or annul the original order um, and I wondered is there another option uh, to confirm can it confirm reverse modify or annul so confirm meaning I think I think the answer to your question is that if you don't do any of those things you're confirming Okay, fine. So it's like default? Yeah, just like if you don't get the four votes on a supermajority, it's a denial. The vote is to grant the variance, but it, um, it's denied. So it's sort of the, we don't have to have confirm as a we just love for not doing those others. Okay. I'll let, a, I'll let a lawyer make that decision. <laughs> yeah, I'm good with it like this. Um, that was the only thing I had wondered. Anybody else have anything else? Can I have a motion to accept the 2021 rules of procedure? Second. Two. We will, well, yeah, this is 21. Sorry, this yes, is 21, but we will. Yes. yes. We will uh, turn them into 20. Right. Motion. I move. Okay. Second. Okay. More discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. There it is. Um, under, now it's not under here, but I was wondering uh, to name a vice chairman. I nominate John. <laughs> um, John? John Casey. Nope. Do not accept the nomination. Oh, come on. Sorry. You're perfect. Sorry. <laughs> there are other things pending that might prohibit me from doing right. that, so I understood. Gotcha. Oh. Any Thank other you. nominations? <laughs> I nominate Kelly. <laughs> Uh, I said Dave first. So why don't why don't you do this? You all talk amongst yourselves one to one. Okay. Nominations okay. next month. We do it in February. Oh, we'll do it in February. Okay. okay. I'll just get that on. At least yeah. get on. And and if none of you is willing, Chip will literally pick out of a hat. <laughs> Okay. I'm ready. The only other thing I was thinking about, uh, I assume the town board will recognize Terrence's service over, over the years. Uh, the town board did. 
we had a resolution. resolution. You get okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure. And I believe they get he gets it framed. Yeah. He will get he was presented. Okay. I just yeah. Certainly. Can yeah, I also happens. ask John, are you on the board now in the no alternate thing? Has that been finalized? I assume based on the bylaws of last year it said that if there was an absence. I would be the. You get rolled into. Get rolled okay. Into. Oh, good. I yeah. didn't realize. I that was going to ask the same thing. Right. So, so now so you're a permanent member now, right, John? You're going to be on the board. I believe good. so. Good. <laughs> well, you scared me there when you said you had other things potentially. Well, for, for a ending, while. So. For a while, anyways. Right. <laughs> yeah, and then, but we that aside, we still need to seek a uh, an alternate. Ultimate, member now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any? Keep your well, the board in. makes that determination, don't they? Oh, they do, but we can make yeah, that's a town board decision. Um, um, yeah, I think they're, Sean, I'm assuming you're seeking people or Doug will start seeking people. Mm -hmm. Well, I think yeah. we can also, if you know of anybody, I think we can forward it to Doug or whomever. And yeah, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, you can do that and uh, you can send it to me and I'll. Okay. I think other times we've had people who have been before the board or spent a lot of time here at the board uh, who have been, you know, I think we're well experienced. Uh, right. <laughs> well, we tried to build a pool 17 different times and then said, enjoy them. Actually, now that I think about it, I may actually have. Potential. Let me. Okay. Let me review that. Great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. I need the approval of the December twenty first meeting. Seeing that I wasn't here, I can't say anything. Right. Right. <laughs> motion. A motion. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. And let's see, next month's agenda, February 15th. So far, we just have one variance, two uh, setback, and two setback variances on the mm -hmm. Brent Woods, Brent yep, yeah, that's it. That's all we have so far. He's putting an addition on. What's the deadline? How, how uh, is it close? To the fifteenth, can they submit and then get on the? Uh, oh, that deadline is passed. Oh, so it's passed. The deadline January third. Yeah, oh, like, the beginning of the month. Okay, no. gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Else, Maybe on that agenda, just put adoption of findings or ratification of findings of fact for the these two. Okay. Ratification of findings of fact. Yep. Okay. Sorry, before? I didn't see everybody in person tonight. Oh, okay. I, my, I had a meeting run late, so. Oh, we're glad you joined us, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. absolutely. Sound is way better this time, by, by far. Good, okay. Yeah. Chris, Chris Nadler, are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. The decision sheets, we have those signed as soon as they're ready by chip. Do we no. need to wait? Ratification gonna, findings? No, but we're but we're gonna wait for Chip to approve the findings that I'm gonna draft and then he'll sign the sheets with those findings in them. And then right. we're going to ratify them. Well I know it's not perfect, but well oh, yeah, we need no. to do them before the next meeting. Yeah, the ratification. Yeah, we do them before that. We'll do it. We need to get those signed in seven days. Right. You'll, you'll, you'll get them signed in time. Uh, send out findings tomorrow or Friday. All right. And Chip can look at them and make sure he agrees with them. Sean and Chip can agree. Actually, I'll send them. You know what I'll do? I'll send them to the whole board. Yeah. The thing, when you're talking about ratification, our next meeting, just like close, I wasn't quite sure. Yeah, what, are you, what did you... What you meant by that? What I mean is that the board... So, you and I agree that these are the findings of fact. 
Right. That's, that's yours and my findings of fact, not the board's finding of fact. Um, so I think to uh, have the board agree with those. Uh, since the decision sheets have to be within a statutory deadline, you know, we, we don't have that luxury. So we'll just have sort of a after the fact ratification. So it's not just you and me making the decision, the entire board can agree or disagree. We really haven't done that before, have we? We haven't, no. no. Okay. This is because you're going to be writing these up and I mean, I in correct. Them. Yeah. So we're almost sending them out within the seven days as a draft pending. No, nope. we're going to, they're going to be official findings. And then if the board wants to enhance them or reduce them, then that will change it. Okay. It's so not going to change. Okay. Shauna and Michelle and Chip, this will not change the way the development office gets these decisions done even a little bit. Thank you, Chris. Okay. <laughs> You're still trying to just eat Thanks me for in, volunteering. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any more business? The change in your in your responsibilities is zero. Great. I love that. <laughs> I know. Most people do. <laughs> All right. Great. Well, thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn? I motion. Second. <laughs> Second. All in favor. Yeah, I'm not even there, and I'm still motioning to adjourn, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay.